Oh, I'm live. Okay, cool. Hey, this is Ariel Grace from A Gang of Girls Radio. And tonight we're going to be talking about our heart chakras. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize the importance, how important the heart chakra is. And since it's love month, you know, of course we're going to be talking about love, heartache, heartbreak, that's, you know, forgiveness, all kinds of fun things. Hi, Lisa. So that's what we're talking about tonight is the heart chakra. Hi, Lorraine. That's a love lady, Lorraine Cohen. If you see her on Facebook, like her post. She's awesome. All right. So um, first, I want to say that or I want to announce that the Evie and Ella book is on sale at Amazon. If you look up Evie and Ella, um, you'll see it. Uh, all the money for, from the Evie and Ella book is going to Madeline Grace um, for her health and well-being. Hi, Gunner Boy. Hi. So um, all the money there is for, from the book is going to, for Madeline's health and well-being. So please go over, check it out, see if your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, nephews would like to read a fairy tale book. It's full of love and hope. <laughs> so check that out. It's also on my website at arielgrace.net. Click on the author page and it's the first book that comes up. So check out check it out, Evie and Ella. And I said, and as I said, all the money, all the profit goes towards Madeline's health and well-being. And please pray for Madeline Grace. Send her prayers. Wrap her in those pink blankets. Wrap, wrap, wrap. And fluff them out. She needs all the love she can get. Yeah. All right. It's love month. Spread the love. <laughs> all right. So um, we still have spaces available for our Reiki workshops on March 9th and 10th in Chicago. And you can check out those at arielgrace.net or psychictheo.com. You can sign up. For the workshops and that pay for pay for them and everything okay so um the next thing is oh i do have hey marissa i do have appointments available in chicago um i have appointments available on three seven and three eight okay so please send me an email at a gang of girls inc at gmail.com and i'll get you booked in all right, so, and I'm making appointments for soul retrieval, uh, Reiki, and readings. So, either, any of those. All right. Um, I'll also be having books, too, while I'm up there as well. So, uh, for those of you who want to buy books in person and get them signed and all that fun stuff, I'll have books. I'm bringing up um, Healing with Purpose, I'm Psychic, Not Telepathic, and, of course, the Evie and Ella book. Yeah. All right. So, um, and for those of you who want an appointment to speak to a psychic medium, for those of you who want to connect to those people who have passed, you can check out my bro, Psychic Theo at PsychicTheo.com. If you need an ast astrology um, consult, check out Rockin' Reverend Rhonda at KarmicLaw.com. Okay. I don't do... I don't do anything unless I ask Rhonda first what dates are good for whatever the heck I'm doing. And then it all turns out good. <laughs> all right. And for those of you who need your cords cut, energetic cords cut, check out Melinda Carver on Facebook. Make an appointment with her. She does an awesome cord cutting ceremony. She does. They're great. And you will feel like a whole different person after you've had the ceremony. All right. So... And I asked you all for love stories, you know, for this month. I'm still accepting love stories. I have some love stories to tell. I have one love story tonight from one of my clients <laughs> who is who is totally awesome lady. I've known her for a long time. And um, she, I was really surprised that she actually wrote this because she always says that I'm so mean to her. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not really mean to her, but, um, this is, this is her story about loving herself. 
So um, I'm going to read it to you and then we'll start talking about the heart chakra. All right, so this is her story. I met a man when I was 18 years old and fell madly in love with him. My mother hated him and found every reason I should to avoid him at all costs. If I was paying attention, I would have seen she knew what kind of man he was. My mother had six children. I've known her for a long time, and as I said, I've traveled a lot to a lot of places, and I've met a lot of people. And um, she does own the strip club, and she does teach the girls how to respect themselves. So, in a way, in every way, she totally loves herself because she's learned how to uh, take care of herself. And is she married? No, she's not married. But she is, like, she does take care of herself and she does take care of the girls that works in her club. So, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, so... I'm seeing that I have a bad, like the bad connection thing keeps coming up. So I'm just going to keep talking through it. Hopefully we get this all done. And then if hi, die, and then if, um, you know, if you miss anything, you can always watch it again. Everything goes up on YouTube. Um, it'll go up on YouTube later on tonight. Hi, Mary. So um, tonight we're talking about heart chakras. We're going to be talking about like how important the heart chakra is because it is really important it's the mediator for all of our chakras including the chakras that are above our heads you know so oh lorraine i'm sorry you know i think that i well it hasn't gone up again but it looks like it looks like the interruption isn't it's not interrupting anymore hi charlotte mary Love you, Mary. So, um, so our heart chakra is our mediator. It's, it's the mediator for the lower chakras and the upper chakras. And I've always told everyone that says, oh, my lower chakras aren't important. They are. Your, your lower chakras are really important. It's, uh, it's really good to keep that energy running up through the lowers because the lower chakras actually... There's a lot of energy there, and when we breathe it in and we pull that energy up, it helps us energetically. So, you know, pay attention to those lower chakras. Make sure that you feel safe and secure. Make sure that you're feeling creative. Make sure that you're willing to do those things that um, you want to do. You have the courage, you know. So we want to make sure that our lower chakras energy is moving up into our heart right? And we want to make sure the upper chakras also are getting that heart energy as well because we want the energy to run up. We want it to run up, okay? Okay, so with our, with our heart chakra, there's a lot of things that can be done and, you know, it's how we love. It's how we love what we do. It's how we love our family. It's how we love ourselves, um, it's how we love so many things. So that's where our energy of love is, is it's in the heart chakra. So remember our chakras are like tubes. They're like tubes. And so there's a front and a back, front, back. That's why sometimes for those of you who have had Reiki sessions with me, I'm always putting my hands underneath your back or underneath your shoulder so I can get to your heart chakra so I can like work with the heart chakra because I go in through the back and the front to make sure that that energy is running very nice and smoothly for you, okay? So we can clear out the goo and cooties. <laughs> we need to clear those goo and cooties out of the heart chakra so that it's running well, so that we are feeling good about whatever it is that we're doing, all right? Okay, so when our heart chakra is running well, we understand and we can, we can um, see, we can feel unconditional love. Unconditional love is really important. Just like my client who is, you know, she used to be an exotic dancer when I first met her. 
and then now she owns the strip club. Do I think less of her because she owns a strip club or that she has been an exotic dancer? No, absolutely not. Because that's what she does and that's what she loves. So, and she takes care of it. So, just loving a person for their brilliance, their beauty, who they are within their being is awesome. All right? So, our heart chakra, love, has no, like, prejudices it has no um it doesn't judge because we all are who we are who we are who we are <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're not judging others because that's a lot of wasted energy and um you know we could be doing something funner like putting pink blankets around people Yay! Hi, Tracy. Okay, so our heart chakra doesn't judge, but it does assist us with courage to love ourselves and others. All right? Judgment and prejudice and that is, it's more of a man-made type of energy or a man-made type of emotion. You know, if we all work from our hearts, it wouldn't matter. You know, it wouldn't matter what a person does, what color they are, um, how they act and interact, because that's the space that they're in. And until they ask us for help, we can't help them. They're not ready. They won't hear us. Okay? So, patience is one of those heart chakra things. <laughs> okay, so what can you use to stimulate your heart chakra? You can use rose quartz or any of the pink stones, any pink stone that you have, all the way up to rubies. Okay, because ruby is a, it's a love stone. And there are actually pink rubies that are very beautiful. So a lot of the pink energies have, pink stones have virtues for different energies of love. Because there are, there are different energies of love. Right? You've experienced some of them. We're human. <laughs> so, um, so rose quartz or any pink stones, rose oil, rose oil is a good thing. So if you, or the scent of roses, roses themselves, if you wrote, if you can grow rose bushes, right? So those can help stimulate the heart chakra so that it starts to feel open and the energy is flowing. Right? Okay. So, if you, if you yourself need that stimulation, rose soap, there's all kinds of people that make soap with rose oil in it. Soap yourself up so you smell like roses all day. Nothing better than that, right? <laughs> Smelling like roses. All right. So, um, the thing with the heart chakra, what it helps us with is it helps us overcome jealousy, envy, and fear. Fear is a big thing, all right? Fear is lack of presence or lack of love because when you're present, you love. You're in your heart. You're present. So when you're present, there is no fear. There is none of that jealousy or envy, you know, there's none of that kind of stuff going on. You just are. And you're more able to make decisions, okay? And you're also more able to, like, see where people have hooked into you to get, like, that crazy energy from you. And you don't want those cords, you know, you don't want that. So when you're present and you're in your heart chakra and you're moving from love and your heart, you're not going to be, you're, you're going to feel those cords and you'll be able to cut them. Okay. And you can use the invocation. I invite and invoke. Hey, bro. I invite and invoke Archangel Michael to cut and carterize all cords leading in and out of me that are no longer serving me. And I invite and I invoke Archaea Faith 
to fill me with divine light, to heal me. Thank you. Always thank them. Because it's always good to be grateful, right? Breathe in love, exhale gratitude. Okay. So a lot of um, a lot of my clients are like, uh, when I tell them, well, you know what? You got to do some release work. <laughs> you got to you got to move yourself into being present. So you got to do the release work. You've got to forgive so that you can be free. Because forgiveness actually does set you free. So when you start looking at your life and you look at those people that are like you're like going What do you mean I can't forgive them? Forgiveness is going to show that I'm weak doesn't show that you're weak at all it hope when you are hi Alicia when you're when you are holding something or when you are not forgiving when you're holding that hurt you hold yourself in place you don't allow yourself to move forward and your energetic field shrinks to where it's like really close to you instead of expanding so that it can really, so that you can really utilize your gifts, your intuitive gifts. So when your energetic field is like this, and you're full of fear, and you're full of anger and frustration, it goes down like this. And then what can you do? Nothing. Because you're not in your heart space. You're not in that space of love. So forgiveness actually does set you free. It expands you. And it assists you with calling in more love or bringing in more love. And also it assists you for loving yourself. Because when you, when you don't forgive someone, you're also not loving yourself. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to punish yourself. Punishment is stupid. It's harsh. We're, we're not meant to be on this earth to be judgmental or judged it's, it's harsh and it's not for us not for us to judge to be discerning yes but not judge you don't want any of this harshness so look at your opinions and and how you interact with the world and see if you're feeling those harsh feelings and like look at those harsh feelings where do they come from do they come from actually you or do they come from someone else did you pick up that opinion from your parents or your grandparents, your auntie, your uncle, your husband, your wife, you know, whoever, significant others? Did you pick up that from them? Or is it truly your own and you need to look at it and say why and then release it? That way you can stay present in a heart space, open to receive. Breathe in love, exhale gratitude. All right, so that's why being present is so important because then you'll know also like if you're feeling your feelings or if you're feeling someone else's feelings. So a lot of empathic people mistake other people's feelings for their own and that kind of messes everybody up. It messes everything up. So that's why there's a great game that you can play you can play this with your family too because if you're empathic most likely your children are empathic too so what you can do is take someone's hand and hold their hand and ask them how are you feeling and let them tell you how they're feeling and as they're telling you how they're feeling connect and see if that's really true is it truly how they're feeling you're connecting in and you're seeing how they're feeling. You're using that empathic ability because you already know in this moment how you feel. So how do they feel, right? And you can do that with your kids. How do you feel? <laughs> so a lot of people say, oh yeah, I feel fine. Do they? <laughs> So feeling with your heart, moving with your heart, you know, keeps you present, gives you courage, 
and assist you with overcoming anything that may come at you because you're dealing with love rather than anger and frustration and fear. When you're in a place of fear, it's a lack of love. We don't want that. We want love. Okay, so um, how many of you have worked with your heartstrings this week? How many pink blankets got thrown around this week? I was throwing pink blankets like crazy. I was doubling up. <laughs> it seems like the energy just kept getting stranger and stranger this whole week. <laughs> so I was like, I was blanketing people all over the place. So remember to use your heart strings from your heart chakra and send that love to your loved ones. Because remember, the heart strings are different from cording. Cording is someone coming in and energetically pulling from you. Heart strings is, are located in your heart chakra and they are connected to those who you truly love. So send the love out through your heart strings. Okay. Okay. So we've done a lot of stuff um, actually on Sunday nights with the heart chakra. We have actually like connected to our heart chakras. We have breathed in, breathed light into them. We have cleared them and we've allowed the energy to flow through us and then flow all through our energy field to like keep that energy flowing, that heart energy flowing, all right? So you want to keep doing that even if you do that like every day before while you're on the train, you know, every day when you're in your car, like when you're doing your makeup or your hair, whatever, getting dressed, connecting to your heart chakra and letting that energy flow through the chakra and permeate your energy field so that when you walk out of the house, you're present you're aware of your surroundings. You're aware of the people in your surroundings and what's going on. Okay? Because it's, it's so, so very important to be present. <laughs> okay. All right. So, with that being said, last week... Um, Theo and I were on and we were answering questions from you, one question, love readings. And a lot of people are looking for love. So they're looking for love. They don't know why they're not finding love. Um, they don't know what's going on in the world. Why can't they find their soulmate or their love mate or their life mate? Um, you know, sometimes we have to have different relationships to get to that place of that person that we're supposed to spend the rest of our life with. And so what happens a lot of times is people will stay home. They won't do anything. They won't meet anyone because they know in, in 2020, in March of 2020, that's when they're going to meet the one. So they might as well stay home and not do anything. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Go out and experience love. A lot of people say, well, I'll just get my heart broken. Why would you get your heart broken if you're experiencing love? If you're just experiencing it. If you're having the experience of love. Yeah, there is grief through separation. But what do you learn through these relationships? What you learn is is awesome because you learn about your heart and you learn about the other person's heart. You learn about like what your heart wants, what you want. So don't stay home and wait. Glow instead, work on your glow, work on your auric field, clearing yourself out, have your experiences, do make your discoveries. Do these things. Have the courage to do that. Go out there and enjoy your life rather than sitting at home and waiting. So you want to create it. How do you create that love coming into your life? Well, you love yourself. And you do for yourself.
Okay. <laughs> so that's the heart chakra all together, all in there. It's, it is about love and presence. And it's about overcoming and forgiving and releasing and moving forward. So staying in your present and looking to your future. That's the biggest thing with the heart chakra is that. And that's the best gift that you can give you yourself. Yeah. All right. So um, that's what I got to say about the heart chakra. <laughs> and um, I just want to remind you again before I go, hey, Brennan, I just want to remind you again before um, I close this down tonight is that we will be in Chicago, Theo and I. We are going to be teaching the Reiki workshops 1 and 2 on the 9th and 10th. Okay, and if you can go, if you go to psychictheo.com or ariograce.net, you can sign up for the workshops there. Remember that we need to know your name so that we can put them on your certificates because you'll receive certificates and manuals for the Reiki workshops. So let us know, you know, go to the websites so you can sign up, you can pay for the, the workshops there. Um, I still have available times in Chicago for Soul Retrieval Reiki and readings on um, the, let's see, the, the 7th and the 8th of March. Yeah. So, and I'm still doing um, the Heart Soul Retrieval for 50% off until... Um, February 28th. So if you want heart soul retrieval, uh, send me an email at a gang of girls inc at gmail.com and uh, we'll get you booked in. Okay? Heart soul retrieval is fun. I love it. I love doing heart soul retrieval. So, um, so remember, please stay present in your life. Give yourself that gift of presence and love and keeping your heart open and aligned with the energy of love. And making it a habit every day to check that and make sure that you are in alignment and that you are you have compassion and that you're showing compassion to people because really in this in this time period we we all need that we all need compassion we all need love right spread the pink blankets around and um, remember to push those, push that love out through your heartstrings. So if you need to see those videos again, they're at arielgrace.net. Click on the Gang of Girls radio um, tab and you'll see, you'll see them there. All of the Facebook Live events are there and you can check them out. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, I don't know if I should read the love story again because I had my internet connection was bad. Did everybody hear the love story that I read earlier? I know there's a lag. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you did it, it got recorded and I'll be uploading um, here in a second. So everyone have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me. And next week, Melinda Carver will be on with me. We're going to be doing love readings. Melinda Carver is so sassy. Oh, you guys didn't hear the love story? Okay, well, I'll read it again. I'll read it again. That way you can hear it. And if you have a love story you want to send to me this month, please send it in and I will read it. Okay? Okay. So this is the love story tonight. Um, I met a man when I was 18 years old and fell madly in love with him. My mother hated him and found every reason I should to avoid him at all costs. If I was paying attention, I would have seen she knew what kind of guy he was. My mother had six children by different fathers. And although I never met my father, I fell in love with a man very similar to my father. 
This man and I dated for a month. Then I moved into his then I moved into his place. We had a very turbulent three year relationship. This is putting it nicely. <laughs> One day I came home and he was gone. Because of the intensity of our relationship, I went big time crazy when he left. Let me also say at this time, I was an exotic dancer in a very fancy gentleman's club. I had a lot of money. I went as far as to hire a private investigator to find my boyfriend. He, he never found him. I decided to turn to psychics. I made an appointment with a psychic and before I even said anything, the psychic told me, move on, let him go, stay in your present and look to your future. Love yourself enough to grieve, forgive, and release. Well, all that did was piss me off. But I kept going back to see this psychic and each time I left the psychic, she would tell me my best love story is me. She told me to fall in love with myself so others will fall in love with me. Each time I had a session with her, I would get less pissed off at her and I even started doing the crazy things she told me to do. I started to love myself enough to set boundaries, love what I do, take care of myself first before others. I am my very own love story and what a love story it is. It's 10 years later and now I have a better understanding of love, loving self, respecting self. It has been a journey. Now I own my own fancy strip club. I have, she, she owns the strip club that she worked at. She's cleaned it up and I teach the wayward girls that end up dancing in my club what that psychic told me in hopes that these gifts will help the, these girls love themselves as much as I love myself. So, <laughs> Yeah, and she's awesome, and she does help these girls, these wayward girls, these runaway girls, these girls that, you know, think they know everything. She helps them, and she guides them onto different places that they need to, to, they need to go to. So, she's, she's an awesome lady. Yeah. So, yeah, I have all kinds of fun clients. <laughs> anyway... Everyone, keep your hearts open and aligned with the energy of love. And I'll see you next week. Remember to send me your love stories because I'd love to read them. I would. Yeah. Melinda Carver will be joining me next week. We'll be doing readings. It'll be very fun for you and us. All right? All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.